step into the sandals of a biblical semi nomad. You know, as Jacob go place to place and back to the sheep. And I became friends with the sheep. He spoke a little English. He became friends. He remained, long story short, you can probably guess, when I got hungry enough, I killed the sheep. And I sliced and diced it and cooked it in a 55 gallon jar with sand and I ate it. Now, look, we live, and I don't think there's anything wrong with it, we live more than ever in a sanitized <laughs> around every corner, <laughs> padded pew, PowerPoint, orange mocha frappuccinos, and gluten free cupcakes in the back, <laughs> climate controlled, 72 degrees, church is kind of well. We just do that for a little bit for better or worse. We have such an impossible task of understanding, and it's not impossible, it's almost impossible, and relating to our children. The, the, the visual, the graphic, the importance of animal sacrifices and how they point towards Jesus. We just do it so hard because of the world we live in. But to be able to go back in time as it were into that world, take that lamb, slit its throat, cut it, eat it, you remind them, if you have to, you want to know if you have the bloodiest religion like in the history of the world, you do it. You want to know it, but you do. And when I, that lamb was 100% compliant with my law, 100%, just like Jesus was 100% compliant with his father's law. It's true. That lamb did not bleed. Nothing. Bah, nothing. Just took it. And that's what Jesus did. Let's go on. Verse number 8. We're almost done. Take it from prison, from judgment. That means that the whole procedure of his death, the whole thing, the whole procedure of his death was all fake, fake news. It was all tainted with iniquity. Number one, you're never supposed to have a trial, ever, at night, which it was. On top of that, you're doubly supposed to never, ever have a trial during a high holy feast. It's like ramming through legislation on Christmas Eve in Congress. Kind of like that. Well, who's watching C-SPAN on Christmas Eve? <laughs> you know what I mean? Nobody knows what's going on. The whole thing was done just to get it. It was six illegal trials in one night. Ants, Kephias, Ants, Pilate, Herod, Pilate. Who shall declare his generation for he's cut off of the land of the living? That is to say, the, 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 the conviction from these illegal trials was him being cut off. Remember, for cut off means to die by a judiciary death. Like capital punishment. Like capital punishment. And we know that that's what happened, right? In between the two thieves. Why did he do that? Why did that end up happening? For the transgression of my people in the story. He was killed for the children of God. Verse 9. Then what happened after he's killed? Do you maybe see from this prophecy why Jews, especially the rabbinate, makes this chapter forbidden in Jewish law and practice? Like, if I didn't tell you this was from the Old Testament, do you think, like, you know what I mean? You tell this to a Jewish person and they just think you're talking about the business and the media. This chapter is 100 percent forbidden in Jewish thought and practice. Whatever you do, Ethan, do not go home and read Isaiah 53. What do you think? How old are you? How old are you? Do what do you think the poor people should go home and do? Hopefully read Isaiah 53. <laughs> Verse number nine. Then what do they do after he died? He, is, I hope your translation says they. Verse 9, should be they. They made his name with the wicked. The disgust the Jews had for the servant was displayed even after his death. If it was up to them, which it really wasn't, they probably would have left his body. And his body was naked on the cross. Don't be dismayed by the Thomas Kincaid pictures. It was a shameful thing. It was a shameful thing. They probably would have really left his body up on the cross and let the birds of the air and the beasts of the field devour. Let it rock in the sun or throw it in a common grave if it was up to that. But they couldn't do that because of the law, the Torah. But, anyways, what we have here, look at this beautiful prophecy. But he ends up being buried with the rich. And now he is an itinerant minister who has nothing. All he has is one thing that gambled over the seamless pope when he died. That's all he had. He did not have the money to buy himself a proper burial. A rock hewn cave with the whole nine yards. But of course.
course, God, in his mercy and grace, used his friend, Joseph of Arimathea, to meet his needs. And the amount of, I don't even know if I should say this word here, I'm probably going to do it, the equivalent of essential oils. Essential oils. The equivalent of the essential oils that they bought to put on Jesus' body was like 60 or 70 pounds. I mean, talk about a proper burial from head to toe. Honored him, sealed the cake. Why did all this happen? My translation says because, but that preposition should probably be although. It makes more sense than it fits. That's what it should be. Although they did this to him, although he never offended anyone in word or in deed. Then finally, our last block, verses 10 through 12. Yet yeah, it pleased Yahweh to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. The sufferings of the servant were not by chance. They were not even. of his persecutors, but when you get down to the nitty gritty, it was the quote unquote good pleasure of Yahweh to kill him. When he killed him, what did it look like? Well, he made him his soul an offering per se. Now that word for offering, pause real quick. In the pages of Leviticus, generally speaking, you have five different offerings. A sin, a trespass, a pain, peace, a burnt, and a grain. And depending on what kind of sin you have or what kind of offering you want to make for your world, that would depend on which of those five offerings you brought. That word for offering here that Jesus was, that is a trespass offering. And here's why it's important. If I stole $100 from pastor and I was found out or my conscience convicted me, not only would I have to give pastor $100 back, I'd have to give him an extra 20 bucks. That trespass offering is 120%. So Jesus' death on the cross covers all your sins from north, south, and east, and west. That's the point. Go on. Then what happens after he's killed as an offering? He's going to see his seed. He's going to prolong his days. You have a resurrection here. The blessing of God upon the servant for faithfully fulfilling his mission is couched in the language of the greatest blessings for an ancient Israelite. Long life, which he has, and a big family. Verse 11. Then what happens? After he dies, he rises again. He shall see of the travel of his soul and shall be satisfied. Pause. What does that mean? That's a really difficult verse. It may not look like it or sound like it, but it is. Here's the sense of it. He's going back from Resurrection Sunday, I think, to Thursday night in the garden. And what's going on there is that the joy to come after the suffering was present in the mind of the servant. He, in the, he was with God. He knew what was on the other side. Today you will be with me in paradise. Knowing what waited for him on the other side helped him persevere and suffer through what he needed to suffer through. It's true. And even with us, I mean, I has not seen, nor have ear heard, neither has entered into the hearts of men the things which God has prepared for those that love him. And I have a feeling that all of us, but some of us more than others, when we stand before the living God, even though you're in heaven, you're going to say to yourself, why did I do more? I mean, really, why did I do more? Look at my eye has not seen, nor has near her ear her ear has entered into the hearts of the things. Look at these things which God has prepared. I wish I would have done more for him. I wish I would have, oh, would have obeyed and gone into full time ministry. I wish I would have been a new pastor. I wish I would have been a pastor. I wish I would have been a missionary instead of just doing whatever. And I think all of us will feel that way to a certain degree when we meet him. But you can change that if you want. <laughs> it's all up to you. It really is up to you. How much you want to do that? But he knew it was there crystal clear. That's what helped him persevere. So by his knowledge, that has the idea of the salvation which he possesses, he's going to do what? He's going to justify me. So the knowledge of, of God, of salvation, he has imparted unto his seed, unto his disciples, I would say, are going to save men. And that's us right here, right now. 
because he's going to do what? Bear their iniquities. And according to this verse, at least, these are the two main things that Christ does now post crucifixion. According to this verse, he makes people righteous by giving them his own righteousness, and he bears the burden of their sin. And finally, verse number 12, Therefore, will I divide you a portion with the great, ye shall divide the spoil with the strong. Once again, the reward of the servant for persevering to the end, for doing well done to do a faithful servant kind of job. The, the influence, the power he is going to attain after his resurrection is equal to that of the greatest kings of the entire world. He's talking about gold and treasure and spoil. And that's just another way of saying the influence he's going to attain. You know, how does he attain that influence, that salvation which he possesses? Because he poured out his soul into death. Think of like a, a potter, an ancient pottery vessel, and it's full of the liquid, and you dump it out, and you dump it out to every single drip goes out. That energy, that it's kind of like maybe this is a dated reference. Remember, like in '93 or '94, '95 or whatever, when the Bulls were playing the Utah Jazz in the finals. No. Yes. <laughs> Remember when Jordan was playing and he had the flu and he was sick, but he still played. Remember at the end of the game, like Scotty Pippen literally had to carry him off the court? Remember that? One, two, three, four. <laughs> this how he just laid it all out there. He did every single bit they did. And I know it's a terrible example, but that's what Jesus did. Jesus laid every single bit out there, gave it his all, 100%. Why did he do that? Well, why was he numbered with the transgressors? Why did he bear the sins of men? So he did an intercession for you and I. And the famous chapter ends with this fourfold reminder of who made your salvation possible and how. These privileges, we have faith, toxic privileges that flow to us. And sometimes if you don't know, even though you might know it, if you don't act on your privilege, what good is the privilege to a certain degree? If you don't act on the privilege. It's true. These privileges that flow to us are number one, we are justified from our sin. Number two, you're acquitted from any kind of guilt. Number three, you're accepted into God's, the uh, living in God's favor. And finally, you are accepted into God's family. And all of this is possible because of the fulfillment, the precise fulfillment of this prophecy. God's word is true, and it's a treasure. Amen? Before we scatter, number one, just remember, Sunday school, only well, half an hour. Trust me, it'll be fantastic. It'll be worth your time. How to remember it's number one. Number two, like the pastor said, that there's a, an offering box in the back. We are 100% full-time missionaries. We come by faith. We don't charge one hundred percent And we just hope that we were a blessing to you and that, and that if we were, that you would think about and pray about blessing our family with a gift. We've got to drive all the way back to California, which is not cheap. And that's where today's offering is going to go towards giving us a back home, safe and sound. Thank you so much for having me.